Justin O'Reilly. Uh, throughout our project, we've all worn many hats. I'm our group leader. I, my main tasks were keeping us on track with our Gantt chart so that we manage our time correctly. Um, I also was the lead designer for the project. safety officer. My main tasks were to make sure all documents were safe and oversaw research on relevant patents. Keeping track of medication is a challenge. As the average life expectancy increases, it is becoming more and more common for people to take some form of prescribed medication or dietary supplement. With new drugs being developed daily, it is going to become more important to take the full recommended dose for the prescribed amount of time in order to begun our research focusing on how medication is currently dispensed to patients at assisted living facilities. There's currently a six-step process in place, as you can see. Each patient first visits the primary care physician on the campus of their living or rehabilitation facility. Next step, the doctor then assesses the patient for what they are visiting for and prescribes any medication that may be needed. In assisted living, aspirin, sleep aids, and vitamins must also be prescribed or approved by the primary care physician. The prescriptions is, are then sent to the pharmacy. When the pharmacy then receives the prescription, they check it against any medications the patient is currently taking. If any interactions are found, prescribing doctor is then notified and must choose a new medication for the patient. Once all the medications are suitable to be taken together, the pharmacy dispenses the medication into bottles pre-labeled with the patient's name and room number. Uh, the bottles are then transported to the rehabilitation or assisted living facility. Once the pills get to the assisted living facility, they are received by the facility, then they're loaded into facility. Um, when they're placed into the cart, they're ordered by the patient's room number, so that's to benefit the nurse while they're delivering the medications. Uh, and any medication that's classified as narcotics is strictly controlled, so that, account, that leads them to have to put narcotics into a separate container with its own box uh, in what's called a strong box and container. And that's to comply with
issue we see is that there's no pill accountability. The research and interviews we've done provide no evidence of systems in place uh, to prevent nurses from stealing medication or medication disappearing altogether. The next issue we see is that having paper charts is not an effective means of keeping records in a digital age. Uh, I think we can all relate to the following that when we're baking and following a recipe, we can either use the wrong ingredient altogether or substitute one amount for another. Uh, the same can happen to a nurse giving out medication, which is why we see it as a problem. submitted, the new medication will be checked against the National Drug Database for conflicts with any other medications the patient is taking. If a conflict is found, the doctor will have the ability to override the error and the prescription will be successfully sent to pharmacy. In the event that a patient has run out of all of their available refills and must revisit the physician, the physician must first verify that it's the correct medication, the correct dosage, and the time when they're supposed to be taking the medication. From there, once it's been verified, the doctor will then be able to uh, select an option to renew the medication and input a new number of refills. If the medication needs to be stopped by the doctor altogether, uh, the doctor then has the ability to choose to stop the medication immediately or at the end of the current prescription length. Uh, the in-room dispenser, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, We'll then read a smart chip on each modular pill container, which we'll also go over in a few minutes, and that can stop the medication either immediately or at the specified time. Uh, this feature allows the dispenser to be used for short-term medications, as well as if a patient is a frequent user of uh, something, say a sleep aid or aspirin on a regular basis, that'll allow the cartridge to be stored with that medication and it'll only be dispensed when a doctor When medicines are prescribed, the information is then sent to the pharmacy and the medications will once again be sent for interactions. If the pharmacy determines a catastrophic conflict with the prescribed medications, uh, it will be flagged and put on hold. It will then be reviewed for further actions ranging from having the doctor sign off and acknowledge that there was a conflict in the medications, all the way to changing the prescribed medication completely. Uh, once all the flags are cleared, then the medication will be dispensed into its modular container and then that'll then be placed into the patient's in-room dispenser. Once filled, the cartridges will then be delivered to the facility where nurses will place them in the patient's dispenser. Each room dispenser will read the patient's information about each medication on the specified uh, modular pill container. From there, medications will be dispensed whenever the patient needs them. Okay, so we set out to design the very best dispenser we could. So to do this, we needed to stick to a, a few simple constraints. Okay. So our primary goal when building the dispenser was to keep usability in mind. Since the device would target an older audience, we wanted to make it as easy to, as possible to operate and adapt to. Our next primary goal was to make the device as easy for faculty staff to manage as possible. We also needed a durable design that would last a lifetime to comply with regulations on storing medications. We 
also wanted to create a device that was easy to implement in older facilities and has the ability to dispense liquid and tablet medication. We started out by each designing the dispenser how we thought it should be made. Each design has, qu has quite a different look but incorporated most of the same features. From there, we were able to make our decision matrix based off the differences among all of our designs. Once we drew our designs, we put the differences into a decision matrix that allowed us to rank each design based on six general categories. Ultimately, we decided to go with Justin's design uh, due to its high marks in each category and its ease of access. Um, we have three main components to our dispenser, each of which play a key part in making our device the best it can be. Here's our original sketch of the design, which incorporates each feature. When it's time for the patient to take his or her medicine, the dispenser contains auditory and visual alerts to signal the patient. Um, the integrated light panel shows glows a bright red, and the speaker can play a user customizable sound. Uh, an L a built in LCD will also display information about the medications. That'll range from instructions that say take it with a candy bar or even waiting 20 minutes to eat after you've taken. When the pill is dispensed, a cup of water will also be dispensed to the patient. Liquid medication will also be dispensed in the correct dose if required. When a patient lifts the medication out of the machine, it'll be recorded as taken in the database. If a patient has not taken their medication within 30 minutes after it has been dispensed, an alert will be sent to the nurse, notifying them that the patient has not taken their medication. The nurse will then proceed to check on them to see what is going on. We also have sensors built in to detect tampering with the machine to steal medications. When the cartridge lock is open to put medication in or take medication out, it will be marked in a database as a precaution. When medication is getting low, the pharmacy will be notified and they can dispense another cartridge or alert the nurse that the patient needs to make another appointment with the doctor to remove the prescription. There are plenty of sensors to ensure the system is operational, which we will also be talking about more in the maintenance features. According to DEA standards, all narcotic medication must be stored behind two separate locks. To ensure that our system meets these standards, we've decided that it would be best to have all medications behind uh, two separate locks. One benefit to the design is that uh, if anything goes wrong with the machine, maintenance will be able to work on the machine without having to remove the medication. The first set of locks consists of two locks on the front of the system, which can be opened using a key. The second set of locks is on the inside where the medication is contained. The medication department can only be opened after a nurse swipes her ID card into the dispenser allowing her to turn the lock with a separate digital key containing all the authorized devices that the nurse is able to access. Modular pill containers allow a patient to have as many medications as they need. Each module contains one specific medication and an embedded smart chip with the patient's information along with dose and time the medication needs to be taken. The angle design to make the dispenser as easy for facilities as possible. The system is able to detect and report such items as water leakages, waste buckets full, cleaning solution empty, and clean water empty as well. Throughout our research and facility visits, we discovered each floor in the facilities contain terminals for nurses to use. Each terminal has a phone and this provided us with a lot of possibilities for system management, and we ultimately decided to have one overall system where the nurses are given permission for each floor or area they maintain. We have designed our user interface to be as simple and to the point as possible. For the nurses,
nurses to manage their patients on their assigned floor, they'll first navigate to an administration portal on their terminal or tablet. The nurse will then log in with their user ID, employee ID, and password. Once logged in, the nurse will then be able to check the status of each patient's dispenser they are assigned to manage. In our example, our nurse, Rebecca White, manages the second floor with five patients. All of their dispensers, dispensers are functioning properly as they should be. Once again, we have our same nurse, Rebecca, but in this scenario, the dispenser in her patient Richard Nixon's room is showing us that the waste collection bin is full. Our nurse now has the option to go to Richard's room to replace the waste container and clear the error message or contact facility management. When we were designing our system, we had to think, what is going to control all these dispensers? We decided that each dispenser will connect via power and ethernet to the facility's network. Each dispenser is registered to the management server where system administrators are able to delegate permissions based on the employee. The management server then polls each dispenser once per minute to check for errors. When an error is detected, the nurse on staff project and we believe it has an enormous potential. It is our recommendation to our CEO and board members that we continue development of this project. Future development opportunities include designing a model for home use, designing a bracelet that patients can wear that will vibrate to alert when it's time to take their medication. And we also see an opportunity to provide hosting options for companies that are worried about security and integrity of their patients' data. Now we would like to open up the floor for any questions or feedback that you may have for us. Did you consider any other alternative solutions and did you need to get in what kind of other add-ons were you exploring? Um, we didn't specifically come up with another alternative. We figured we wanted to have an automatic system in each patient's room. Uh, from there it would be managed on each floor once we found out they had terminals. How is our approach yet from the dispenser to the nurse? How complicated is this design? We, with the extent of our project, we really didn't have time to design the internal workings, but assumably each pill container will have some form of uh, mechanism that will allow the device to dispense it and it will come out in front. But the, the cartridges themselves are taken from the pharmacy ambulance, the head nurses, and the nurses can dispense that shot and put them in the machine. Well, how much did you estimate that each one of these machines would cost? We weren't able to do a cost analysis. Um, hopefully we would be able to somehow provide these machines to the facilities and somehow make money back within uh, service and maintenance contracts. of the error that your system doesn't actually address, and that is that the patient is actually caught drugs in their mouth rather than pollen or throwing them in the bin, because your system has failed to take it. Do you know in your error analysis where, where that error might fall? We did not find that information. Um, in the briefing packets, each one of you received, we stated that we got all our facts from Department of Human Services and other uh, Food and Drug Administration facilities. Uh, they don't have information regarding how much of the time the patient actually gets the medication from the bottle to their mouth. I mean, the sensor on the field detection would take it out of the machine, so I guess there is uh, obviously a possibility that the medicine would have been put on the floor or yeah. something in the room, but hopefully in their case, the floor would just be their medicine. Well, is the machine meant only for the patient to use it, or is it the nurse still to go there and, and then the, the nurse would? We did consider this. Um, for the section of the living facilities that have patients that are able to take their own medication, we believe that they can be trusted with the machine. Um, one other alternative that we would like to possibly explore in the future is 
having the machine even in rooms where uh, the patient isn't able to take the medication by themselves, in which case a nurse would have to swipe their card to bring down the medication. So then the nurse could visually see yeah, the pill yes. being taken. Specifically about the machine, no. What we would try to standardize would be the actual cartridges that you can receive from the pharmacy. Each one really connects together to make a chain, and from that chain, that's what the machine then reads. So we would hopefully be able to get those cartridges standardized to be used in other medication dispensing devices as well. No, I just wonder whether you need to frustrate the patient even simpler, because if I'm old like me, I could just cope with take the medicine because he's ill or she's ill and she cannot reach. Do you want an alert system that will tell the nurse to have? Once the medication isn't taken after a half hour, it then alerts the nurse on that specific floor mm -hmm. and they're able to check what's wrong with the patient. This would be for the home use. Would that still be, be only be able to be opened by personnel at a pharmaceutical location that you control? Considering you're able to get narcotics with your own prescription, um, housing them underneath the machine still require, would require double locks if they were in a pharmacy. In a home version, we would have to investigate further if they were able to be stored in the machine. When we had originally cast our environment, we figured that every living facility provides some form of backup generators so that the systems would remain powered throughout um, any issue that may occur. Uh, for home use, could the cartridges be extended in capacity or is there a limit? Uh, that really depends on the healthcare provider. A facility we visited specifically, they're only able to get medication for up to 30 days. So it really depends on your healthcare provider's plans. Yes? Is it required for it to be connected to the wall or something like that? Yes. Uh, the version that we have for the assisted living facilities does require it to be connected directly to the DC power. Okay. Other questions? Yes, sir, Cooper. Well, one of the things that just came up in uh, to my designs, we may be able to slide those containers right into the machine and it can punch out uh, the pill at the time it needs to be taken. Yes? Uh, I can see this is very valuable because you could actually sell this as a way to cut down on the expense of creating the blister packs because you've got safeguards in place. And, I mean, that's what the point of this is, so that each individual's patients, because it's the requirement of Medicare, um, of being dispensing blister pack, you've really gone around that.
for cutting down on its expenses, the cartridges are use reusable as well. Um, so hopefully we would be able to get maybe a four or five year lifespan on, on each cartridge. Usually pills have an expiration date, so hopefully uh, we wouldn't exceed those expiration dates by storing the medication. We would never be dispensed a dosage that was going to go past its own expiration. And this, yes, sorry. And this machine will also have the drugs remain effective. A lot of people don't take their medication the full dosage length, uh, and that's the reason we need to keep creating new medications. Once a medication becomes ineffective, essentially we have to re-engineer whatever it's meant to fix in order to make a new uh, medication that's effective. The idea for the service going forward will just as a pill dispenser or just as a some medication surgery? Right. Um, hope in our initial designs on paper, we wanted to have the pills contained here and then refrigerated 